Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to disassemble and inspect your cylinder head parts and determine if anything needs to be replaced on your Razor XP1000. This is part four of our engine rebuilding series for the Razor XP1000. And what we've done up to this point is remove the engine from the vehicle we tore it down and we've already inspected all of our other parts. So the last thing we need to do before we reassemble the engine is take care of the cylinder head. So what we're gonna do here, we'll disassemble everything and check the parts for wear or damage and replace or repair anything that needs it. And we're gonna install some new valve stem seals. Now this cylinder head, it came out of a 2014 Razor XP1000, but the process will be similar for all the Razor XP1000s. Just make sure you refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. Now to do this job, we have some Prussian blue and valve grinding compound. We also have some new valve stem seals. These came out of our Vertex gasket kit. And then a little bit of Scotch-Brite. We have a pen and paper to write things down as we take measurements. And to take those measurements, we have a micrometer, small hole bore gauges, and then I have a straight edge as well. We're also gonna need the Tusk valve spring compressor, and I'm gonna use a magnet that's gonna help us get some keepers out. We have some cleaning brushes as we go through the process, and then we also need some chemicals. So we have assembly lube. This is our carbon remover, help us clean up that cylinder head, and then we also have some contact cleaner. Here on the other side, we have some common hand tools, hammer punch, veneer calipers, and then we also have gasket scrapers, safety glasses, rubber gloves, and some rags. All right, so we've gone ahead and tipped the cylinder up on its side. We're gonna do a solvent test. And what that is, we'll put solvent down the intake and exhaust ports, and we're gonna check for any solvent that's leaking around the valves. If there's any leaking around here, then you know that particular valve has a problem and either the valve needs to be replaced or the seat needs to be reconditioned. And it probably goes without saying, but when you're filling these ports up with solvent, you wanna make sure that the valves are completely covered and that way you get an accurate reading. So we're just gonna let this solvent soak in there for a minute. And a lot of times the solvent, if you do this test, you're gonna notice the problem right away, but we're just giving it a minute and that way we can be sure that we don't have issues. As you guys can see, we actually have two leaks from these exhaust valves. So we're gonna check those out really close when we take this apart. And as you can see, we're making a big mess, so might've been a good idea to use a drain pan. The next thing we need to do before we pull these valves out is clean up our combustion chamber and this gasket sealing surface. So we're just gonna use a gasket scraper and then also we have this carbon clean. We're gonna use a little bit of that on the combustion chamber and it should clean things up pretty good. And as you go through the process, be sure that you don't damage the sealing surface of the cylinder head. And for the carbon clean, we're just gonna apply it and then let it soak in for a few minutes and then wipe everything away and might even be helpful to use a little bit of Scotch-Brite on the cylinder head on the sealing surface to finish cleaning it up. And as you go throughout the process, you might have to apply some more carbon clean and keep letting it soak in on the tougher spots. After you have your combustion chamber cleaned up, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a punch in my vise and that's gonna hold the cylinder head up and make it easy to work on. We'll remove the valves and lay everything out in order. You can remove the valves without putting a punch in the vise and having it raised up. But again, this just makes the job a lot easier. And to put this cylinder head on this punch, I'm just gonna use one of these holes for the mount, where the mounting bolts normally go. And just be careful not to damage the cylinder head surface. So to get these valves out, I'm gonna start with the intake valves and I've laid out a shop towel so I can lay everything out in order. And then we'll compress the spring far enough to expose the keepers and we'll remove those with a magnet. Now we'll back off the valve spring compressor. And when you do this, it's a good idea to keep a finger on the bottom of the valve just so you don't drop it and damage it. Then we'll remove the spring and the upper spring retainer and then we'll push the valve out. So right here we have our valve stem seal. We're gonna remove that. It has the spring seat built into it. 
And we need to be really careful around this bore right here since that's where our tappet or bucket rides and we don't want to damage that surface. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using some needle nose vice grips and that way I can lightly clamp down on this and I don't have to worry about slipping off or worry about this, worry about my pliers pressing into that machine surface and we'll just lift it and pull it out. Now we're gonna repeat these steps for the remaining valves. All right, so these outer two exhaust valves, we noticed we had some leakage from that solvent test and we had problems with them. And what's interesting, when I was gonna take this valve out, I usually press down maybe an eighth of an inch and rock them back and forth just to get an idea of how much play there is for the stem to guide clearance. And this one has quite a bit in there, so we might have a problem with that guide. A worn out valve stem or a worn out valve guide or it could be possibly both. So if you have a lot of play in your valve guide, you wanna keep that in mind as you go through the process because if that valve guide is bad, Polaris recommends replacing the complete cylinder head. So we'll see what happens with this one. But for now, we're gonna continue removing the rest of the valves and then we'll do a little more cleanup and take our measurements. All right, so I just removed the spring from the second intake valve in, and I did the same test, rocked the valve back and forth, and it's quite a bit tighter. So I'm pretty sure there's an issue with this one. We'll see what happens on this other side that had the leak as well. So here's what the second one looks like. I'm gonna press it down just a little bit. I'll rock it back and forth. You can see there's a little bit of side to side play. No matter what, there's gonna be a little play in there. And we'll measure this out, see if it is in spec or not. But uh, this one is quite a bit different than that one next to it. All right, now we'll move our cylinder head back over to the workbench. And we need to clean this thing up and clean the valves up before we start taking measurements. And I just wanna point out that we have everything laid out in order and organized. And that way we can return all the parts to their original locations as long as they're in good condition. So at this point, we can use some carbon clean to remove some of the carbon off of these valves. This one doesn't have a ton on it, but sometimes the exhaust valves will. So we'll use some down here on the stem and on this valve face. And then we can move over to the cylinder head to clean the carbon out of the exhaust ports as best as we can. So again, I'm gonna use that carbon clean and a soft brush. You can use a wire brush, but if you do that, just be really careful, especially around where your valve seats are. You don't wanna damage anything there. So probably better just to use a little carbon clean and this toothbrush. Let that soak in as long as it needs to and get all that cleaned out. And just so you guys know, you can, if you have a wire wheel available, you can actually use it on this and clean this valve up since this is a stainless steel valve. Now for the cylinder head, again, this is a longer process if you're just using the carbon clean. A faster way to do this is let the carbon clean soak in for a little bit and then you can use a Dremel tool with a little wire wheel on it. But you just, again, you wanna stay away from these valve seats and then only let the chemical work in here and you'll wipe it away. There are other, a little more harsher chemicals that can remove some of this carbon. But if you use those, just be really careful. It is possible for those to damage the aluminum. All right, now that we have everything cleaned up, we went ahead and we had our exhaust valve guides replaced since we had all that free play in there. Now, Polaris will tell you that you can't replace these exhaust valve guides, but there's a place in St. George, Utah, they specialize in power sports cylinder heads. It's called Fast Heads. And they actually replaced all those and cut our valve seats. So. Everything on our head is good to go and we can show you what these parts are supposed to look like. That way you know if yours is bad or not. So the first thing we're gonna do in our inspection is check the cylinder head for warpage. So to do that, I've got our straight edge and we'll use a feeler gauge. Now the spec for warpage on this is 39 10 thousandths of an inch. So I've got a four thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. If this goes in there, then we know we're over the limit and we need to replace the head. And we're just gonna do this in a star pattern around the cylinder head. 
All right, so our cylinder head passed the warpage inspection. So the next thing we need to do is check the valves and see if we can reuse them or not. So with these valves, we're gonna do a visual inspection and make sure they look all right. So the valve face, you wanna check it for any pitting or if it's cupped. So if it has a concave surface right here where it seats, then you know the valve is bad and needs to be replaced. Now at the tip of the valve, you wanna make sure there's no damage and that it's not mushroomed out and that there's no damage to this keeper area as well. So if those things look good, what we'll do is measure the diameter of the valve stem. We're gonna do that in three different places and halfway through we'll rotate it 90 degrees and take those same three measurements and write them down. After that, we'll go ahead and make the same inspections and measurements to the rest of the valves. Now, I do wanna point out that if your cylinder head didn't pass the leakage test and you had a really bad leak, then you wanna check these valves for run out, see if they're bent. But usually it's gonna be pretty obvious if these are bent and then you'll need to replace them and repair your cylinder head as well. Now, moving on to the valve springs, our manual actually doesn't give us a measurement for the free length of these, but we wanna inspect them and just make sure there's no visible damage or cracks. Now that we know the valves and valve springs are okay, we're gonna continue inspecting the cylinder head. So on this, we're gonna look right down in this bore where our bucket rides and make sure that there's no scoring, deep grooves or any damage in there. If there are, you'll need to replace it. And then while you're looking down in there, you wanna take a look at the valve guide. And if these are cracked, then again, you're gonna have to replace it. So if all of that checks out okay, then what you can do is take some measurements on the valve guide and you can do that using a small hole bore gauge. And we're gonna take the same six measurements on the valve guide that we did on the valve stems. So top, middle, and bottom, both in the X and Y directions, and we'll compare those measurements to spec. And with this small hole bore gauge, it's pretty much like a feeler gauge. You just want a little bit of drag on it, and that way you know you have the correct measurement. And we'll take it over to the micrometer. Now on the other side of the cylinder head, we're gonna inspect this valve seat. And what we're doing, we're checking for any pitting. Sometimes there can be actual chips taken out of there if this thing's badly damaged. If it looks okay, we're gonna check the contact pattern with the valve and we're gonna use some dye to help us do that. What we have right here is just some Prussian blue. You can put this on the valve seat or on the valve face where it contacts the seat. And you wanna make sure you're installing the corresponding valve to that seat. Next, we'll take the valve and we're gonna tap it straight down into place. We don't wanna rotate it, and that way we get the correct pattern of where this valve is actually sealing on the seat. I'm gonna push the valve up a little bit. And we'll take the valve out and we'll see where it was contacting on the seat and on the valve face. You're looking for an even pattern all the way around and you want it to be centered on the valve face. And we also need to measure the width of that contact pattern. So for us, it's gonna be 39 thousandths of an inch. So you can see on the valve seat where the Prussian blue was left behind, you want this consistent circle all the way around at the correct width. If there's any gaps in it or if it's uneven, then that's where you're gonna to need to get that seat machined. And when you're this far in the motor, you definitely wanna get it taken care of and make sure that you're going to a machine shop that specializes in power sports. Once you've done that, you wanna check the contact pattern for the remaining valves. Now, if you have the cylinder head machined, if you had the 46 degree cut, it's an interference cut, you're not gonna do any lapping. And if you had the regular cut, then you can lap them. You wanna check with the machine shop which cut they did. So if you need to lap these, what you're gonna do is take your valve. We'll apply just a little bit of lapping compound to the valve face. And it's really important, you don't wanna get any of this on the valve stem or down in the valve guide. And then when you do this, install this into the valve guide, you wanna make sure you have some assembly lube on the stem. So we'll go ahead and set that in place. And then we're gonna take our valve lapping tool, press it down 
onto the valve, and then we're going to rotate it back and forth a few times. We'll lift up on it, let some more of that grinding compound get down in there. And you can hear that pitch change. Once you have that change in pitch, then you know that grinding compound has done its job. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the remaining valves. And when you're done with that, you may want to make sure that all of this valve grinding compound is out of there. So besides wiping it up, we're going to wash this out in some warm soapy water and we're going to use those nylon brushes down in the valve guides as well. All right, now that we have everything cleaned up, we're ready to start assembling. And I'm going to put a drop of assembly lube down each of the valve guides. That way we make sure we don't get any corrosion in there from when we wash this out. Next, we're going to apply assembly lube to the valve stem and a little bit on this valve face as well. Then we'll install this into the corresponding valve guide. Next, we'll take the spring seat and seal, and we'll apply a little bit of assembly lube to that. And then we're gonna install this onto the valve, and when we press it on, we're gonna rotate it just a little bit. And then we're gonna use a socket. This one's an 18 millimeter socket, and I've cleaned it to make sure we don't get any dirt in here. And we'll press this all the way down. Next, we'll take the valve spring and we're going to have these tighter coils towards the spring seat all the way at the bottom. Now we'll take the spring retainer. We applied a little bit of assembly lube that, on that as well and we'll put that on next and now we can compress the spring with our valve spring compressor. And we're just compressing the spring far enough to expose the keeper grooves. And then I have my magnetic screwdriver. I'm going to install these keepers with that. And we also applied assembly lube to these as well. All right, once both of those keepers are down in the groove, we can back off the spring compressor and make sure that those keepers stay in their groove. Now to make sure that these keepers are seated all the way, I'm just gonna take a punch on that end of that valve stem. That's gonna open the valve just a little bit and make sure that these keepers don't pop out when we start the engine. Once you have this valve installed, we'll go ahead and repeat the same steps for the remaining valves. Just keep in mind, if you are reusing your keepers, keep them with the corresponding valve because all of these parts wear together. Now, if you do need any new parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is part of our engine rebuilding series for the Razor XP1000, so you can find the rest of the videos on there. Thanks for watching.